Hi everyone, in this watch and learn video I'm going to replicate one of the dribble designs by using Elementor and steroids for Elementor add-on. So no need for Elementor Pro this time. As you probably know, Dribbble is a self-promotion social network for creative people. But why am I doing this video at all? Well, the other day I received an email from one of my subscribers asking me to teach people how more complex layouts can be built with Elementor. And as a reference to that more complex layout, she provided the link to one of the designs made by Balkan Bros Digital Agency. So here is the hero section that she finds not to be doable by Elementor, which is only partially true, and you're gonna see why exactly if you continue to watch this video, of course. But rest assured that the end result will be pretty much identical to the original design. Let's figure out what it takes to bring a design of that level of complexity to life. I made a screenshot of the target design that I plan to use as a visual reference while I'm working on the actual layout. I'm starting with two sections, first of which is supposed to hold the original design only, while the second one is going to house the replica. By just looking at the design, I can tell that I will need the one column section to be the base of the layout. The base represents the main background which in the design file is that tan colored shape that sits behind everything else. So I'll have to add two columns intersection atop the base, whose left hand side column consists of the photo and the product info, while the right hand side is supposed to hold the text. The right hand side column seems to be a little bit wider, so I'm gonna adjust that as well. I must add some padding to top and bottom side of the base background because there's a padding on the original design file too. The only tricky part of the whole design is that product info because I'll have to be able to group all the widgets of the product info somehow and also define the common background for all of them. The only way to do something like that is to add the intersection widget inside already existing intersection which in Elementor is only possible by using the trick. Otherwise it's, a, it's officially impossible or unsupported, whatever you like. So I'm not gonna talk about the trick right now because I made an entire video tutorial on that subject. I'll just do it with presumption that you are familiar with the trick. And in case not, you can always get back to watch the video named Intersection Inside Intersection. At this point, I'm pretty much done with the basic layout. Let's see how to add the base background and how to create that slanted bottom side. First of all, the background is supposed to be added to the column of the outermost section. Why? Because the section background is always full width, while I'm dealing with the box layout here. Next, I will not use the background color option. I'll rather use the background overlay and it's simply because the, the background overlay can be manipulated like an object. You'll see how exactly in just a minute. In Elementor, you have to define the background type first in order to make the background overlay panel available. Not sure why, but that's the way the background overlay panel works for the columns. Now I have to pick the background color and I think I'll use my own color scheme. No need to replicate colors or figure out font families. I'll rather focus on the layout. Okay, how do I make that slope in the bottom side of the background? Quite simple indeed. Overlays extension is going to land a hand because it allows me to cut out a portion of the background overlay by using the clip pad setting. So first I'll go to the Clippy website and generate copy paste ready clip pad. I guess that's something like 5% slope in the bottom side should work fine. But in case not, it's easy to be adjusted in Elementor. I'll show you how exactly if needed. And that should be it. Maybe the slope doesn't look steep at the moment but it should become steeper once I add some content, okay? Because the slope is responsive too. The background also has that offset in left, or maybe better say, a margin. And this is where the overlays extension becomes handy once again. 20% offset should be okay, but I can easily fix it up if needed later on. The exposition must be adjusted as well, because the background gets resized at the opposite side. That's why. There's one minor thing I want to do as well, and which is to change the default stacking order of the background overlay. 
Hence the fact that this is going to be the base background, it should be sent behind everything else, just in case. That's why I'll type in minus 1 into the Z index input field. Alright, let me add some text to the text column now. Uh, there's a little tag word that says payments in the very top and there's a dash right next to it. So I'll use the heading widget to display the tag word and of course divider widget to represent the dash. I could also make the dash part of the payments word but in that case I don't have any control over the dash width so I guess this way allows more flexibility. Obviously, I'll have to, I have to make both of these elements inline positioned and for that purpose, I'll open positioning panel and choose inline option. Vertical alignment should be centered and I'm going to do that for both of my widgets. Generally speaking, the inline position elements are always standing one next to another while the block position elements tend to take all the available width and push everyone else to the next line, to the new line. So, if, for instance, you are, you are in doubt how to set two buttons one next to each other, you can safely use this method. Let's add the rest now. The heading, a text block, uh, and the Indian arrow at the bottom. I'm going to speed all up now in order to save some time. Besides, here is nothing unusual. I'm just adding widgets and doing all these typography adjustments. I'm going to add margins, padding, etc, etc. Nothing unusual. At the end, I have to align the content of my text column to the middle, vertically. And of course, let the text breathe by adding some padding to each side of the column. 60 pixels to each side is going to be just fine. Now I can tell them pretty much done with the right hand side column. So let's move to the left column, which is a little bit more tricky. I'm going to handle the padding first. The point is to add some space around the product box content, so I'll select the left hand side column and add required column padding. As I'm doing that, you can see that the intersection is way smaller now because of the column padding, of course. So not only that padding is used to affect the size of the product box, it's also used to position the box horizontally. However, according to the original design, the product box sits in the bottom of the column and I'll have to set the vertical position under the column's layout settings. Let's add the background image. Instead of adding the image as a background of the column, I'll add it as a background overlay. And the logic behind using the background overlay is identical to the base background. I must be able to somehow handle the shape, size and position of the background and which is only possible if I use the background overlay and the overlays extension. Likewise, in order to make the bottom side of the image slanted, once again I'll go to the Clippy website and actually reuse already generated clip path. The slope angle is pretty much the same, even though it looks like a little bit steeper, which is due to the fact that the background base is much wider than the image background. Now that I have my clip pad done, I have to handle the width of the background because you can see that it doesn't stretch full width. There's a gap on the right hand side. Visually, the image reaches the middle of the product box, as you can see on the original design file, which is somewhere between 70 and 80% of the column width, I guess, but easy to fine tune later on if needed. And now the trickiest part of the layout, the product box. Let me add some padding to the column first, there must be some space around the content, like 20 pixels. Why do I find it tricky? Well, there are two potential problems. The first one is definitely the shadow, and the second one is the decor. I'm talking about that bunch of dots in the background. But no matter what, and with a little dose of creativity, everything can be done properly. I'm going to start with the background, which once again is actually supposed to be the background overlay. This time I have to be able to reduce the height of the background in order to make that flower pot look like it's breaking out of the product box. But we'll come back to, to handle the background size once all the elements are in. It's going to be much easier. So the first element is the flower pot. It doesn't matter what kind of a flower pot 
or the plant I'm gonna use here. The point is that the flower must have a transparent background or otherwise it won't look like it's busting out the top. That's why I'm using transparent PNG file. The next element is that check icon. I'll use the icon widget for that purpose even though I could have included with the flower pot. However, there's a great chance that the check icon role is rather functional than just decorational. I mean, it could be used as an indicator of something or an action trigger, so including it with the flower pot wouldn't make much sense in that case. It's always a good idea to think upfront like what if, much better than just follow the path of least resistance. Now, in order to make the check icon look like it's stuck on the flower pot, I'll use the negative margin even though I dislike using negative margins and I'm using it only if I'm out of all other options. So obviously this is one of these optionless moments. If you take a look at my flower pot, you can notice that it doesn't sit right in the middle of the box. There's a slight offset on the left hand side and I think it's going to be much better if I place the check icon to the opposite side of the flower pot. It's just because of the balance, there's no other reason to make that kind of exception with respect to the original design. Okay, now I'll speed everything up once again in order to save some time because all other product box elements are pretty much standard and there's nothing unusual in dropping widgets to the column. Everyone should know how to do that. As I mentioned earlier, I have to reduce the height of the background overlay of the product box, of course, in order to make the flower look like it's breaking the top of the box. That's why I gotta enable overlays extension, which allows me to change its height and position. So I'll reduce the height for like 30%, which is gonna be 70%, and in the same time, increase the vertical offset or the Y position for the exact percentage to actually balance out the gap in top. Okay, let's handle the shadow now. Overlays extension allows me to add the shadow box to the background overlay as well, so I'm gonna create some sort of soft or subtle shadow. You can clearly tell that the original design uses that kind of shadow, which emphasizes the depth, but it's still subtle and in harmony with all other elements. And I think I, it would be really cool to add a shadow to the flower pot as well, because otherwise it looks kind of flat. This is the drawing, not a real flower pot. That's why the shadow might add a little bit of depth to it. As you can see, I'm using another useful extension of Steroids for Elementor add-on, which is named Shadow. And the flower looks much better now. The question. Why did I use the clip pad to cut out that slope on the bottom side of the product box. Well, you gotta know that the clip pad property in general cuts out everything outside the pad being defined, which in turn means that the shadow will be invisible because the shadow falls outside the shape. So that's why I'm gonna use the trick to create that slanted bottom side. First, I'll create another column below the existing one and I'll make both of my columns 100% white now by using the Breaking Bad extension, which is also the part of Steroids for Elementor add-on. Very, very useful extension. And then I'll drag the spacer widget to my newly created column. Okay, now I'll make the spacer like 20 pixels tall. And of course, I'm gonna add the background color to the spacer. Okay, now it's time to go to the Clippy website and generate clip pad for my spacer widget. The target shape is going to be triangle this time because essentially I have to add or append triangle that mimics the slanted bottom side. In order to be able to cut out the shape from the spacer widget, I have to enable space rat extension, which is another awesome addition to steroids for Elementor add-on. And there it is. You can't even tell that the slanted bottom side has nothing to do with the shadow, right? Okay, now it's time to add the decor and finalize the replica. 
By me, the most appropriate location to add a decor would be the background overlay of the intersection widget. It's due to the fact that the decor should also be responsive and in the same time its size should relate to the size of the intersection widget itself. Because of the lack of the dots decor, I'll use these wavy lines. It's actually not about what I'm going to use for the purpose of decoration, but rather about to show you how I'm going to position it there. Once again, the overlays extension is going to help me with defining the size and position of the decor and help me redefine the stacking order. In case you didn't notice, on the original design screenshot, the decor is supposed to be found behind the image, even though it's technically atop of it right now. So if I just change Z index value from nothing or the default to minus one, everything falls effortlessly into place. As simple as that. It looks like we are pretty close to an end. All I have to do is to test my layout responsiveness and do all of those little adjustments. So let's check the tablet mode first. Not much work here as I can tell, but one of the things that I must fix here is the main, bag, main heading font size. So I'm gonna reduce the font size a little bit and make it fit the container. And of course, I have to adjust the line height corresponding. Okay, I think that if I remove 5% padding on the right hand side of the outer column plus 10% smaller padding on the left, I'll gain more balance between the picture and the product box. Everything else looks good except maybe the padding on the text block. I think I'll remove it completely in order to make the text block more compact. Okay, that's it. Let's switch to the mobile view now. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to have a little bit more work here. So first I'll remove that 5% padding on the left and the right hand side of the outermost section. By my opinion, it takes that precious space on either side of the viewport. Next, I will make the base background full width because no need to keep the margin on the right hand side anymore. It doesn't have any aesthetic value on, on a screen size that big. Plus, I have to reposition the background overlay horizontally. It has to go back to the zero point. I could also return 5% padding on the right hand side of the product box. Otherwise, the decor remains pretty much hidden, as you can see. So I believe that was not designer's intention either way. You probably noticed that horizontal scroller too for which I think is caused by the decor's exposition. And if my guess is true, all I have to do is to reduce the exposition. So I'll try with something like 10%. Okay, it looks fine. And finally, I'm gonna adjust the padding of the text column. More space is needed for text now. So if I reduce the padding for, let's say 50%, which is now 30 pixels. So from 60 to 30 pixels, the text is still going to have enough space to breathe. However, the top padding should remain as this, I think. So I'll leave 60 pixels in top and remove the bottom padding completely because there's too much padding in the bottom. Okay, it took a while for this tutorial to complete, but in spite of the time spent on watching, I hope that you find it interesting. I hope I was able to teach you something, which is the whole point of this video. You can download the training file if you like, and if you want to keep this channel alive, feel free to visit my Gumroad shop and find something for yourself. In case you plan to buy Elementor Pro, please use my affiliate link because that's how you can help me earn some cash too. As usually, all the required information is in the description of this video, don't forget to check it out. And that's pretty much it. Stay well, peace and love.